uh, a name that it's just outrageous and shame on us for not mentioning him or barely mentioning him so far. Bar like one line in the intro of the podcast. Ferland Mendy, after five months of injury, we just hadn't seen him. A normal human like doesn't play for five months in the competitive game and needs time to like integrate himself, to get to match fitness, to get accustomed to his surroundings. Alaba is a completely new center back partner than he's used to, you know, so... And he comes in and immediately he just gets on the field and he's like, I'm just the best defender here. I don't care how much time I've missed. I'm the best defender here. I'm probably the best defender in the world at this position. It just, it was so impressive to me. And I don't like you, like, I know that like, Om, you have Vinicius is your son. That's your thing. Cool, man. <laughs> I think Mendy's my son now. I think I, I he's my son. I'm going to just claim it. I will, he will forever be like the guy I'm going to stand the good times and bad I will defend him I will maybe if I had a Ballon d'Or vote I might even throw one his way he's been today was just so impressive to me like and I noted this at halftime one of those performances like where you can't even look at the stat sheet because if you look at the stat sheet he had one tackle zero interceptions zero block shots the eye test told me that this was a master class defensively I don't care what you say like the amount of times he came over centrally exactly at the right time to intervene. The one that won't never count on the stat sheet because it was technically offside, but he didn't know that he comes over and and and, and intercepts a, a cutback on the six yard box. He put everyone who tried to go at him in his back pocket, whether it was uh, Tete or Maicon or, or I think it's Dodo, the right back. Uh, I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing all these names. Um, and there was a moment in the second half where I think it was Tete's sub. So I don't remember who it was because Tete, I think, got subbed at halftime. He comes over and it's like a break and Mendy's the one defending and the ball carrier just like, nah, I'm just going to retreat. We're going the other way. We side the possession, go to the other flank. I, it's amazing. I just I can't. I can't sing his praises enough. I just can't believe. And again, this is not just an ordinary performance for me. Like if this was a Mendy performance, like midway through the season, I probably wouldn't even be losing my mind like this. But just the fact that this is his first game back and looked like he didn't miss a beat. He had a partnership and a synergy and an understanding with Alaba, which was great. I think Matt, you said that, you know, Alaba and Mendy is a great partnership as far as the center back left back pairing goes. So uh, am I going crazy? Am I overreacting? What's what do you, how do you guys feel about this? Did you uh, did you talk about his goal line saving tackle too yeah. or challenge? Was that okay, that one yeah. the one that was offside? I think right, but it, uh, yeah, I think it was offside. But still, he would have made the block if it wasn't, which is insane. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think he just elevates our level. Like it's incredible how much of an impact he had today. It really is. Like I didn't realize you really recognize how much you miss Mendy when he wasn't on the field once he's back because he just takes this team to a whole new level. And I, what I loved about the Alaba Mendy tandem was they like Alaba so good at bringing the ball out of the back and he's so comfortable on the ball. And I thought he had, nobody really talked about it today, but I thought Alaba was incredible. Like I thought he was so good. And um, those two can interchange really easily. You saw it a couple times, like, when Alaba would just kind of do an overlap out wide or maybe he was circulating ball, passed it to Cruz, and then to get out of Cruz's way would go wide and then Mendy would come central. And like, it's so easy for them to do that because they, they had the characteristics and the ability to do that. And so, um, and there was one time where Mendy covered centrally at center back for Alaba and Alaba just stayed wide. Like it's a perfect tandem. I guess my only criticism would be, um, Alaba's aerial ability which still hasn't I mean I don't really think that's been exploited yet this season I'm trying to think back but uh those two man I'm I'm excited I really hope they can both stay fit and can, we can consistently see them on the back line because that is a really really exciting pairing so I don't really have much to add about the commentary on Mendy's defense because I think Keon basically covered everything I just want to just repeat what he said more to what Matt was talking about, like the Alaba Mendy combination, and just the left sided dynamics in general, right? Which have been the story of the season, regardless of whether Hazard's playing or not. 
the left-sided dynamics were really, really nice today. Even when they weren't necessarily leading to the greatest shots in the first half, I felt like there was something sustainable in this game that was like, okay, a lot of shots outside the box and stuff, but we're getting into good positions in the final third. There are good rotations here. We can create at least one more in the second half that puts us 2-0, and obviously we went on to create way more, but that was my feeling in the first half. And I think Mendy suits the left-sided dynamics well, like th- this level of extreme overloads. Like I like Miguel, but it's been a bit weird with him there. Like we haven't really been able to see his influence going forward because he has no space to overlap, right? Nacho hasn't been great. We've already talked about that. Mendy is a player, which I've been talking about for a very long time to when we were linked with him and we eventually signed him. He's a player who's comfortable going in that half space. We saw Zidane try to make use of that um, to you know varying degrees of success. And Mendy will just adapt, right? He, he sees players on the outside. He sees Benzema over there. He sees Vinicius over there. He sees Kroos deep. Mendy will adapt to the right positions, you know, on the inside. Alaba goes to the overlap. He'll fill in on center back. He's just a very comfortable player doing that. And this is one of the advantages he provides. That's like more of like a soft offensive skill. I don't even know if that really makes any sense, right? We, we talk about his maybe deficiencies crossing. His touch isn't always great, but he's a good balanced player in these types of situations where where we have so much firepower on the left-hand side, we have so much occupation on that side. He just rotates and moves well. He's an intelligent player. And I thought it just facilitated what every, what, what everyone else was doing. So like now, when I think about the way Ancelotti plays to all the left side overloads we have, like it's so obvious that Mendy is like the clear answer here, especially if we're going to go back and press right in future games after this. Right. And, he, he makes so much sense there. And I honestly think that's why Ancelotti has been trying Alaba out there because he's looking for someone who's intelligent enough to be able to adapt to all of this. And I think Mendy, with his comfort being a player sitting inside and all of that, it was really nice. And I thought he just did his bit to help everyone else kind of shine around him. And I'm excited to see what this looks like going forward because I think this might be the actually the ideal role for Mendy as a fullback, right? Where you're not putting too much on ball usage in the final third, forcing him to be something he's not, let him kind of do the secondary things, right? Make timely runs on the underlap, fill, fill inside in midfield, fill inside in center back when Alaba rotates out wide, which could be a potentially devastating combination in the future that teams won't know how to track. I really liked what I saw today from that perspective. I don't think it'll be the main story because obviously there's so many other things, including Vinicius, who we've yet to really get to. But this was like the main tactical thing for me going forward, besides obviously how we changed our defensive strategy. It will be interesting to see, you know, in future games, if we see Mendy make those overloads and overlapping runs more, or if he just has a a, a role similar today where he's not making, you know, those, he's kind of, you know, Ancelotti letting Vinicius kind of have the left wing to himself and cutting and linking up with Benzema and Cruz. And having Mendy in more secure defensive positions with the odd run, like you said, on the underlap arm. But I'm curious to know how that will play out in future games to see if Mendy's role will change. I'm sure it will depend on the opponent. Um, but I just I just love his security there. And I mean, from a pure security standpoint, you had midfielders in position to cover and Mendy there in position anyway. Like, it just felt like very secure again overall. And maybe if, you know, when Carvajal returns, because Vasquez was slightly more offensive today than uh, than Mendy was. And again, if Carvajal returns, I, I don't know, even saying that is like, who knows, you know, Carvajal returns, what does that even mean? Does he return for a game? Does he return for a month? Um, but, you know, if he's healthy, obviously that changes the offensive dynamic and it allows to have at least one wing back with better offensive production on the right wing. While Mendy can be a little bit more um, conservative and pick his spots offensively. <clears throat> uh, which might as well, since we're talking about wingbacks. Uh, how did you guys feel about Vasquez's performance tonight? 